a few months, Nicole's husband was flown back. So. What a story. Yeah. Well, it sounds like everything went right. Students who are learning to do public speaking make mistakes. Yeah. So all teachers do. What mistakes do you think students should especially avoid making? Well, you know, really learn to not, I don't know what it's called, but I know there's, there's a name for it, but learn to not do that uh and ah uh, and whatever, you know, where it's like, or you know was a famous one, you know, you know, you know, like every third word is, you know, try to not, and I used to be horrible at that, and I may still do it, but I, but it's, but it's, it's if, it, if the, every sentence ends with you know, um, that's just horrible, and it's distracting. Uh, if you if you're making a if you're making a speech that's supposed to be factual, make sure your facts are are factual and that they're right and you can back them up. And if you can't back them up, don't put it out there. And especially if you're in a public forum and you've got people who don't agree with what you're saying, who are going to go back and research that and then and then stick it in your left ear. Um, and it, it, you know, and I, I I see. I just did you hear that? You know. Yeah. So, uh, so I th I think um, it's not a mistake, but th or maybe it is. Speaking extemporaneously is just the most important thing you can do. It's it's just like know what you're talking about and speak extemporaneously. If you're talking from cards or notes, first of all, you're you're distracting yourself. And, and uh, then that distracts them, and it cuts the emotion out of it, and it cuts the passion out, and uh, so that's not good. So. Part of being extemporaneous is that sometimes you ask a question that you haven't particularly prepared for. You didn't know you were going to be asked that question, and, and that's part of a lot of public speaking. When people get a prepared address, and then afterwards they take questions. What advice do you have for students? Well, don't speak on a topic that you're not familiar with enough to be able to respond to questions. I, we speak frequently in prisons. If you if you go to our website, there's a on the home page there's a video. It's a, it was it's a movie or whatever by Seattle Channel, and it actually won an Emmy earlier this year. Um, and we're in front of 300 prisoners at the Stafford Creek Correction Center in Aberdeen, and Sometimes we're with 50 women at the Washington Correction Center for Women. Sometimes we're with 270 guys in a visiting room, 110. But th in those presentations are about post-secondary education. And we always try to, have to save at least the last hour for Q&A because that's the best part. So I mean, I'd rather keep you know, if I have if I have an hour and a half, or to sp I'm trying to think of a percentage. I would I, I always if I'm if you engage your audience, um, then it's just if you can have at least like somewhere around fifty percent of the time available for Q&A because the best stuff you'll ever get across is during the Q&A, mm -hmm. especially if you get intelligent questions, which we almost always do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, uh, um, so I, I, I love Q&A, but I'm always speaking about something that I'm really knowledgeable about. Mm -hmm. I, I know the statistics, I know the percentages, I know the anecdotes. There's, I don't remember being asked a question I can't answer in a long time, yeah. and I love them. I mean, except it, it, if don't lose control. One time, and it was Mary Lou Dickerson's committee again. There's a guy from Spokane. Um, I guess I dislike him enough that I've just mentally blocked his name out of my mind. But uh, I'll tell you what it is in a minute. It's. Uh, um, hold on, wake up computer. This guy uh, 
was we were testifying again about post-secondary education and uh, uh, and this may actually have been the day that I had Kimberly, no it couldn't have been because I walked out of this hearing over this guy. Uh, the, uh, so I testified in favor of post-secondary education for prisoners and this guy who's a Republican and he really truly is the most ignorant person in the legislature by far and I think maybe in the state of Washington. <laughs> I mean he's got less brains than God gave to a rock or a crowbar and, uh, and he's offensive. He's a, absolutely an offensive guy. I'm going to tell you his name and, and, uh, and I hope somebody tells him that I said this but the legislature's page is so slow this morning. Well, that's coming up. He, he, he stood up and he said, after I testified, he's, he's like, so Mr. Cohn, I guess I should tell my constituents to have their children go rob 7-Elevens so they can go to prison and get an education. And I literally stood up, I mean, what you're not supposed to, he, he stood up, which is inappropriate for him to do, and then I stood up and uh, and basically told him that as far as I was concerned, he had less brains than God had gave to a crowbar or a rock, and I walked out of the hearing. Uh, so, you know, there's reasonable oppositional questions, and then there's, uh, this guy lost, he left the house, and then he came back to the house, uh, was recent, recently reelected, and he's back there now. And, uh, uh, I guess I don't get to tell you his name, but he, uh, but anyway, so, you know, there's reasonable, I think you have to be respectful of oppositional questions, and, and that oftentimes is a great thing, because if you've got the facts, then you can respond positively, and you can win people over, um, but if it's somebody just being rude and offensive, you know, we've done some major things at Town Hall with five or six hundred people there. And um, and if we're doing some, if we're if if it's on a controversial topic, like the Department of Justice employees murdering a prisoner in federal custody, or uh, or uh, racial disparity in, in police arrests, we pay the police department to have two two police on duty mm -hmm. in town hall, mm -hmm. and we we can signal somebody and have somebody removed from the building. And, uh, and we've never had to do that, but, but you know, so there's a line. If, if, if somebody asks a reasonable, intelligent question and they're really after answers, that's a great opportunity and respond accordingly. Mm -hmm. But in the 1% or less where you have people come along um, and, uh, uh, and they're just being offensively ignorant, then I don't think you have to honor that. You know, I think you can, and you've seen, you know, I've seen uh, Obama and, and, and other politicians, you know, not honor that kind of ignorance. And I, don't, I just don't think you have to, and I don't think you should actually, so. <coughs> Many of the students take a public speaking class, maybe even you when you first go in in your job, are just afraid of speaking. Sure. So get over it. Okay. Is that your advice for them? That's how I did it. You know, <laughs> get over it. You know, and the only way to get over it is, is you know, the I rode horses as a kid. I love horses. So, but uh, the difference between my brother and I and my sister is, you know, your first lessons, the horse throws your butt on the ground, right? You get back on. So my sister got thrown on the ground, scared her to death, and she never got back on. And today, to this day, she's scared to death of horses, I assume. But in public speaking, the way you get over, get over it and move to being just utterly comfortable. So somebody can say to you, you can be sitting in a room and with 80 or 100 people and somebody call you up and you're fine with that and, and you welcome the opportunity. And, and uh, um, uh, so just get get over it. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. And at some point, you'll become comfortable. You'll get pa you'll get past fear. I took that speak that speaking class at UW because I was petrified. 
I was petrified. You know, I w my voice would shake. I would be nervous. I couldn't collect my thoughts. I was an absolute frigging basket case, right? And then I, you, you just keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And then all of a sudden, one day, it's just like you realize it. You say, I'm just like totally comfortable with this. Um, and it takes a while, yeah. but just do it often. And uh, I think the best talk I ever gave uh, was in a prison in Monroe, one of the five prisons at Monroe, and I was up there with a bunch of legislators for the Black Prisoners Caucus. They have an annual summit every year. And it was in the chapel, um, and there was at least 80, 100 prisoners in there, plus people from the legislature, and, um, and so on. And uh, one of the Black Prisoner Caucus guys, I had no idea I was going to be asked to speak. It totally wasn't on my mind. But these guys follow the legislature. You know, they watch TV, they watch TVW. They listen to radio, they read the paper, they're tuned into political issues, they're incredibly intelligent. Um, and so they knew that I was heavily involved in what was going on with the legislature that year, which was 2006, and with this reentry task force they had. And so Anthony Wright asked, just out of the blue, called me up and asked me to speak and give everybody a legislative update, which was a lot of fun because there were so many legislators <laughs> in, in, in the audience. And uh, if, you, if you Google Ari Cohn and you go back through three or four pages of links, at some point you find a, um, a video or a YouTube of that talk, and it was 100% extemporaneous. I didn't plan to speak, had no idea, and um, and I thought it was pretty powerful, and and uh, and the and the and I'm just like as I'm going through this speech, I'm like it's like feeling your way through a dark room or something, right? And it's like where am I going with this? How am I going to end it? Oh fuck, what am I doing up here? <laughs> and, and pardon my French, and and uh, um, and then and then I and, and you get to the end, the end, and I told this wonderful story about. Uh, a guy who used to be in prison and had a fantastic life and attributes that life to post-secondary education. <coughs> and then I just, the punchline I just ended with, <coughs> was that, that's the power of post-secondary education. And then I left the podium and went down and, got, and was seated. So it just, so um, just do it, get over it. So, so <coughs> the, I think you sort of already answered this to all of your answers, but some people may not, they, they may be afraid, or some people don't see the value of public speaking in their lives. They're idiots. They're idiots. I mean, they're idiots. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, um, you, you, can, you can change huge, important things uh, through public speaking. I mean, you could major important things uh, that affect thousands of lives and even hundreds of thousands of lives. It's it's inc you can you can change the way people believe. You can change the way they act. You can change the way what laws are passed that in terms of laws that affect all of our daily lives. Uh, the taxes you pay, everything, how your tax money is spent. Uh, whether schools are built or prisons are built, um, it, it's powerful. I, it, it's beyond belief. It's way more powerful than the printed word. You know, I get interviewed all the time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jonathan Martin from the Seattle Times interviewed me a couple months ago. And it was a great article. It might be my favorite article. But how many people read it, and how many people remember it a day later or a week later or whatever, it versus uh, getting up in front of 50 or 80 Rotarians in a conservative Rotary group south of King County 
where most people are from a conservative legislative district and aren't necessarily sympathetic or empathic towards prisoners and former prisoners and and bring a prisoner a former prisoner or two with you and speak persuasively and field questions and answers and change opinions and change opinions and then that's real and it sticks with them and then they and then they leave and, it, and the next week they remember that and, and they it, it's just really powerful this has been great are there any questions I didn't ask that you wish I had no I don't think so <laughs> I don't think so it's been very very powerful very persuasive yeah. very, and it's going to be really useful for the students thank you good Thanks.